like most of us, I had assumed that West Ham would be doing no business in the upcoming January transfer window, but it appears that that's not the case. In fact, the club have sort of let it be known that actually they're looking, they're actively looking to do some business. But there's a caveat. Well, I'm certainly looking at it, and that's what we'll discuss in this video. I've taken from that that I think we are, we're likely to do something. Now, whether that's a loan or whether that's something permanent, I don't know. But I do think West Ham are going to do something in the January transfer window. Now, I think what is interesting is the situation that Hulan Lopetegui has put himself in by demanding, requesting, asking, uh, yeah, whatever you want, really, for a new striker, for a striker in January. I think Lopetegui, and not without reason, has said... I, I can't, I can't rely on Nicholas Fulkrug. If he's, he's he's viewed more as a bonus than somebody with whom you can build an attack around or anything is expected, and I think that's that's fair. You know, not just his his old injury record, um, his historical injury record, but actually from what we've seen at West Ham, do we have any evidence to suggest at the moment that Nicholas Fulkrug could lead the line and will lead the line for the rest of the season? We we have no evidence. There's a hope. But I think what Lopetegui's probably saying is I can't build this on hope. My, my job's on the line here. I need a striker. And the squad is lopsided. Fair enough. Now, um, the club have made a bit of a quote on, on this. And I'll discuss that in a second. But I think what's probably more important is, before we do that, is to just explore this dynamic of the way things have have probably changed with West Ham and particularly with Lopetegui with this sort of revelation of of the Ruben Amarim news. Now, it, it doesn't matter whether you think it, it didn't happen because of a lack of money or whether you think it didn't happen if you believe the, the, the club's side's version of events, that it didn't happen because they thought it was too risky. It doesn't matter. The, the, point, of the, the point of the matter is he was going to come to West Ham. He, he would have come. I, I, I thought there's no way this guy will join West Ham, but it appears that he would have been ready to sign for the club and, and become our next head coach, manager, whatever you want to call it. That, I think, puts a really interesting pressure on the club. And I'm I'm just looking at this and thinking, well, where would I be if I'd made that decision? Now, I, I think I'd probably double down on the decision I'd made. If, if after things had played out and maybe some information had come to light I didn't want to come out there and it, it shown that I'd possibly made the wrong decision... I, I do think you'd probably double down on, on the choice you have made. My point on this is, I think Hulan Lopetegui is probably more secure that, that, than, he, than he has been for a little while. To put it bluntly, I think the club have, have to make Lopetegui work. And particularly if you think it was David Sullivan that, that made this decision, which it probably was, Lopetegui has to work out. And for that reason, I think he's probably going to get the support in January that he's asking for. Now, the interesting quote from the club was, it, it was, was twofold, really. It was, yes, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be doing business in January, but we have to sell first. We have to sell first. Now, what interesting was, was, the, was the comment that accompanied that. But we signed nine players in the last transfer window, and we expect more from those signings. We have to, sorry, not expect more, we, we have to get more from those signings. Now, that's really interesting. So we're going to bring someone in, but somebody's got to go and we need more. Now, I think the thing about needing more from the players that we've already got. When you actually start to look at it, who is actually, would you say, is a regular in our first team that we signed in the summer? And who was he alluding to by saying we need more? From? Well, you'd probably say it initially, Guilherme and Fulcrug, definitely big money, probably expected more. Um, to a lesser extent, Soler. And the reason I say a lesser extent is he's available. He's just not been selected. So sort of different reasons. I know it's the same with Guilherme, but we haven't had the outlay that we've had for Guilherme. Guilherme cost whatever, 20, 25 million pounds, depending on what newspaper you read. Soler, if it doesn't work out, we can just send him back. That, that's been confirmed now. So it's, there's, we're, we're, we're not, we're not, we've mitigated that risk, basically, haven't we? But look at how many are actually in the team. Kilman? Let's be kind here. Let's be kind. Kilman, Tadebo, and I think a Tadebo is being kind, but let's say he is now a regular first team member, right? And he's more or less going to be Max Kilman's. I'm trying to be generous here. Uh, I know last week you could look at 
Mavra Panos being selected to play alongside Kilman, but let's just, for argument's sake, say it's to Debo. Wambasaka being three. And I'm going to be really generous here and make the fourth one Guido Rodriguez. So that's four out of nine. I think we've got to discount Wes Fodringham because I don't think he was ever... I just don't think there was ever the plan. He's basically fulfilling what he was signed to do, which would be the backup guy in emergency, break glass. If the very worst happens, they'll wheel old clean sheet Wes out and he'll go between the sticks. But I don't think that's going to happen. So it's basically half. It's four out of eight, really, isn't it? Some of them have not made any impression at all. And then you've got some that are first team members, then you've got others that are intermittently coming in. We hope that Somerville will make a bit of a case for himself. But by and large, you, I think I can certainly understand why the club spend, you know, a load of money and they expect to, uh, you know, expect more, more bang for their buck, more return from their outlay. Which leads me to wonder, what are they going to do? Who are they going to offload in January to create? It's not just about generating funds, and, and I think that, that much has been clear. I think there are funds there. It's the ability to spend. It's clearing wages off the wage bill as much as it is, you know, sort of. It's, it's far more that than getting in 20 million that we can spend elsewhere. The club have shown, funny enough, with the recruitment of Soler, with the recruitment of Jean-Claire Todibo, that they can be creative. The whole point of the Todibo obligation to buy was really to offset the payments. Yes, there's been a loan fee, but to offset the payments. So the payments don't start until next year. So if you sign five, six year deal, that start we we start paying Nice next year. We can sign players and be really, really creative with the way that we do it. So it's about creating that space, creating that that gap in the wage bill that's going to allow us to sign people. So I just I was sort of looking through the squads at the moment and, and thinking, you know, who who would we offload? And 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 this is really interesting. Cresswell, no, I don't think so. Zuma's out on loan anyway. That's just he, he you, you can consider him gone, basically. He he is gone. Um, contracts up at the end of the year that'll be done I think I, 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 I'm not even sure we still hold his registration if we do it's gone at the end of the year I think one of the interesting ones Vladimir Souffal do I think that Vladimir Souffal could go in January yes I do I do think that is that is the case Maverick Panos will stay I think that's clear I'm just looking at the list here Kilman's um, obviously just signed he's not going anywhere he's going to be here for ages and of course you've got um, a knife for Gerds is any club going to be in a rush to make that permanent? I, I think not. I, I think not. I think they'll, they'll wait until the summer. So I don't think there's anything doing this. And Vladimir Souffal, defensively, is the one that really sticks out. So I found you one there, right? Because I know there'll be a few people thinking, well, we're not going to be able to get rid of anyone. Who, where are we going to get this from? OK. Carlos Soler. I, I, think, look, I don't think Carlos Soler will be here next season. I really don't. I've already done a video about him the other day. But could we terminate the loan and send it back? I don't know is, is the answer to that, and, but I don't think we will. I probably would, um, but, you know, let's be fair. He's, he's, not, he's not been given a, a chance in his best position. I, I'm, still, I'm still unaware of what type of player he is. To, I, I've, I know what I've heard. People have told me, but I've not seen it with my own eyes. I know he's, I know he's not a left winger. I saw that at the weekend. But uh, do you know what? Nobody ever suggested that he was. Um, let's, let's get to the, the, the little bit more juicy stuff. Do I think Paqueta will leave in January? No chance. Um, do I think... Well, it's another video. I mean, it all, it all turned... It was really interesting watching... As I drove, yesterday, I drove, to, I drove up to Wales and, um, and I had to... Uh, um, I talk sport on and Tim Vickery, who is the sort of South American uh, correspondent on there, he said the net is closing in on Lucas Paqueta and, Lu and Lucas Paqueta's uncle Bruno is considered to be amongst some as like the ringleader in, 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 in like all this betting stuff that's going on. Wow, that's, those are strong those are strong words. And, and, you know, he's clearly a vicar. He's clearly a very, very bright guy. And, and I don't think he'd be saying those things if they weren't the case. And, uh, and they're all, I mean, his uncle, Bru his uncle Bruno may well be forced um, to go and give evidence at this. And I think it's like, some, like a parliamentary hearing in Brazil. It's serious stuff anyway. It, look, I don't know. I think it's difficult to say what's going to happen with Paqueta and whether that will create the necessary space on the wage bill. I don't know. Look, if Paqueta gets banned, we clearly won't be continued to pay his wages. That much is clear. Mohamed Kadust, uh, is the aunt, do I think he'll leave in January? I don't. I'm not going to be mischief-making here. I'm sure there'll be a lot of speculation. 
I don't think so. I don't think we'll sell him in January. I, I really don't. Will we sell him in the summer? That, that's, a, that's a conversation for another day. Alvarez, no, I think Alvarez stays. There'll be speculation again. Uh, Rodriguez, he's going he's gonna to stay, isn't he? Let, let's be fair. Suchek will stay, which brings you to um, Irving. Andy Irving. I think he could go. Honestly, I really do think he could go. I think he could go in, this, in, in the winter window. I would not be surprised, because he's not featuring for West Ham. I, I would like to see him play a bit more. I would like to see him be given a chance. I'd like to see what type of player he is. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about would the club sell him. What do we pay for him? £2 million, something like that. If somebody came in with £6 million with some options, with some obligations or whatever the, the, the case may be. Not, not, not obligations, they'd have already bought him, but with some um, with a structured deal, which would mean if he, whatever, if he played a certain amount of games or a sell-on clause or something like that, I would not be surprised if West Ham were offered something in the region of £6 million, we took it, because it would give us a little bit of money in the bank and it would allow us, you wouldn't free up a lot of wages with Irving because he's probably on very, very low wage, but it would be it would be something. And then that brings us to Mikel Antonio, um, Nicholas Fulkrug, Luis Guillerme, Danny Ings, Jared Bowen. Right, OK. No Bowen. Um, he's not going anywhere. No Somerville. He won't go anywhere. Could Antonio leave? Well, we shouldn't. And I don't think he will. But he might. He might, right? Fulkrug. And this was a non-story. Until... Until Florian Plettenberg denied a rumour that wasn't even in existence, I hadn't even considered it. That, that, I can't remember exactly what it said, but that was a tweet that pretty much said, um, look, 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 as of now, for the time being, Fulkrug's decided not to leave in the winter window. <laughs> what? what? Where's that come from? Um, it's not beyond the realms of possibility. It's not stranger things. Have, far stranger things have happened in football. Far stranger things. Guilherme... No, probably not. I think the club should get him out on loan, though. I mean, he really should, shouldn't we? He's, he's wasting away there. Wasting away, he's 18. You know what I mean. Um, he's, uh, he's not doing it as an asset for West Ham. He's not doing anything sat there. And um, lastly is Danny Ings. Yes, the answer is yes. I think Danny Ings... This, this may well be the point where Danny Ings goes. Now, goes what? To somewhere, some, a team that's struggling to get him some goals? Uh, quite possibly. He's shown this season that he can score. He's shown this season that he can he can be involved. I know it was a bit scrappy and a bit clumsy against Manchester United, but he was there. He was in the correct positions. He was doing his stuff. And, and I think, I just wonder if, if things have changed for him now where he's thinking, actually, I am a little bit better than this. I, I, I can score goals at Premier League level. And he can. You know, how many more chances? How, let's say West Ham played the next 10 games, for instance. How many times does Danny Ings feature? Three? Is that unreasonable? Or am I, I don't. I'm just going by, by what I've seen. Is it enough? And 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 it won't be starts. None of those will be starts. I don't think there's a set of circumstances under Hula and Lopetegui where Danny Ings starts. So the question is: Is Danny Ings happy just being a substitute and coming on in about a third of the games? I mean, that's that's. I mean, you're playing football, but barely, just about. So um, yeah. So I, I don't know. I I find it quite interesting actually. Quite interesting. Um, and so I think we are going to sign someone and someone's going to go. It's just a sort of little recap there. I, I'm thinking probably Danny Ings, possibly Irving, probably Sue Fowler, who's out of contract, don't forget Sue Fowler as well. I, I think when I initially looked at it, and, and those, are, those are the likely ones, and there's some that are mights and possiblies. I think when I looked, I thought, well, there's no one left. There's no one in the squad who can go. But actually scratching below the surface, I think there are. I, I, I think there are three who are li likely... And then there probably are another, what, three, another four who'd have the potential to leave. And that in itself frees up that, that it's not even so much squad space, that space in the wages, that allowance that allows you to be financially creative in the way you structure a deal and, and bring other players in. Um, and funnily enough, you've got to look at that, uh, look at, I know we didn't sign him, that's Samu Omorodian who, um, who went to Portugal, but he was from um, Atletico Madrid. I think the deal was, I think they paid something like 15, was it Porto? I think they paid 15 million pound euros, but 50% of the sell-on fee goes to Atletico Madrid. So there are ways to do deals, there really are. Um, 
whether we can identify, you know, that striker, that, that person that Lopetegui feels he needs is interesting. What will it mean for Nicholas Fulcrum? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I just don't know. But I, but I would agree. I would concede with that. I think there comes a point we have to stop hoping that he's coming back and you have to plan that he's not. And, and it's a shame for Fulcrug, but you look at him and say, look, I'm sorry, mate, but just because of what's happened, you, you, are, you are the reserve striker now. You, you are, you're the guy off the bench. We, we're going to have to go and buy a player that we know can start every game. That, that that's, well, what, what we should have done in the first place, bought a young, fit, athletic striker um, without an injury record and then, and then let the others fight it out to see whether you play a two up top or, you know, whatever. Um, Antonio's then the super sub and, and, you know, maybe you can even come on and play a, a wing role or something like that. Maybe he gets sold. You just, you just don't know. You do not know. I'm not sure Antonio will think about it. I'm, I'm now running back in my mind the things he said about Hulan Lopetegui and I think he quite likes it. Um, I think he feels appreciated. But Lopetegui has, has pretty much hinted through his, uh, you know, his leaks and his sources that, you know, he can't rely on Mikel Antonio to lead the line in the Premier League. Of course you can't. And there's nothing, no slight on Antonio. He's, you know, he's, he's getting on, he's getting on a bit, isn't he? So, yeah, anyway, fair enough. I'd be interested to know what you think on that one, actually, because... Um, no, not not so much whether you think uh, you know we'll bring someone in, but who do you think is is not who you think is surplus to requirements, but who do you think the club will think is surplus to requirements? And um, yeah, have I got it totally wrong with Andy Irving? Could he could go? Couldn't he?